I'm sitting with Mr. Salos and the Nokia event for the global event launch for Nokia 110 and Nokia 112. Salos, uh, why Nokia chose Pakistan for these devices? I mean, there's always India, there's Thailand, Kenya, but why this time you shifted to Pakistan? You know, when you look at the strategy that we are looking with the what we call the next billion strategy, we are looking primarily for markets where you have a huge a young demography. So guys like from 16, 25 years old, very concentrated in urban areas, very uh, keen to embrace um, new, um, uh, new platforms such as uh, social media, for example. And Pakistan, particularly here in Karachi, you see this very, very easily on the streets. So this is one, one, one reason. Second one is our brand here is very strong. Uh, you know, we have a long-term relationship with the Pakistani uh, consumers and, the, and the, um, the resonance that our brand has uh, here in Pakistan is, is very strong. So that was another, another reason um, um, behind this. And the third one is, um, it's a very interesting market where you have a 2G market that you can show very clearly um, experience that you are, you know, if you look at two, three years ago, you would have just in a smartphone kind of a device. Mm -hmm. So with the device that we are bringing today, you can see very clearly um, experience from, from that kind of range with this price point that we are bringing in a development, uh, in, a, in an environment which is predominant a 2G environment and you can have this uh, right at your fingertips. Tip, sorry. The next business strategy started from Mr. Ali Pekka around 2009 when he launched the Nokia 1800 I believe. Mm -hmm. When everyone was talking about the smartphones and feature phones, he started with the, his keynote with Nokia 1800 or yeah. same thing like that. So how successful is Nokia with their next billion strategy? How far are you are now? You know, when you look at the numbers, they are very solid uh, in terms of, uh, you know, I, I, I shared today, uh, we are, um, you know, last year, this is a public number I can share, um, you know, uh, we had an, an average of uh, one, uh, 11, um, 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 roughly around 10 devices per, per second, so uh, on a global scale, which is uh, something very, very important. But um, more important than this, you, you see uh, the market on a, on a global perspective, we are selling in over 190 countries. Mm -hmm. So in all those markets, you have uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know, openness to embrace devices that are more oriented, such as uh, uh, you know, smartphone-like. But then you have, even in countries like Europe, US, and so forth, you have a very good space to launch devices like these ones that are very affordable and at the same time deliver great experience. So in that sense, we are delivering this strategy, uh, you know, uh, going to more countries, having more devices like this one, bringing new experience, lowering the barrier in terms of affordability to include more and more people because as, as the next billion strategy states, we want to get another, the, the other, the next billion to be connected to information and to, tech, and to internet. That's the way to go. Nokia started a strategy along with their Nokia tools in India and other places. Then after a while, I think from this year, they have started to cut it back. That's what we're hearing well, about Well, actually, it's, it's the opposite. We are growing. If you look at the number of users from Nokia Live, for example, compared mm -hmm. to one year, it's growing exponentially, really, really taking off very, very quickly. Of course, we are today focusing on four markets. We are focusing Nigeria, China, India, um, and uh, but we are going to have uh, more device, uh, more uh, sorry, more countries coming soon. So stay tuned for this. Is Pakistan one of those countries? I cannot disclose this at this moment. Okay. Okay. When we look at Nokia, the whole all the mobile all the mobile companies. We look at the Samsung, we look at LG, mm -hmm. and even HTC. They are focusing mostly on the smartphone segment. I won't say that feature phones are not smartphones. They are too. But Nokia is now constraining mostly on the, they are going for the Lumia as fine, this or the up end of the square. Mm -hmm. We're going for the down the bar. Nokia is also very much emphasizing on their feature phones and mid-level phones. So aren't these phones pushing out of the market in terms of the profitability, although it's giving the numbers, but when it comes down to the bottom line, isn't they hurting Nokia? You know, I, I see this in another way because when you look at the difference from a smartphone to a mobile phone or a feature phone, this, this frontier, this line is really blurry. So when you look, for example, let's take, let take the, uh, you were in Barcelona, you saw the, the launch for, for the Asha, for example, the Asha line. If you look at the Asha line, um, for, and this is not Nokia saying, but if you look at some, even the, the operators, they really position them 
uh, those, those devices as in a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Because you have, in a, based on a Series 40 uh, operating system, you have a device that has one gig processor. You know, the ability to uh, play with, uh, you know, a high profile game such as uh, uh, Angry Birds, for example. Download applications, not just the simple ones, but very, you know, aspirational uh, applications as well. Wi-Fi, uh, you know, data connection, uh, 3G, everything that you had in a typical smartphone two years uh, uh, ago. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this line, and of course, at the price point that everyone can afford to have it. Um, so when you look at this from this perspective, this line is really blurring. So it's really hard. And if you ask anyone, what is a smartphone today? It's really hard to get one specific answer. Say a smartphone is because what you what you have uh, in the Asha device, for example, are exactly the, uh, the the same proposition for the fraction of the cost. One thing fun about Asha devices is that they are not they are office friendly in terms of MFE. But if I go down to Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, I can't run those files on top of it. There are not software available which are compatible with it. I haven't found one as yet. I sorry, I didn't for get the office use. Uh -huh. I go for Asha three or two. I it can go for I can run my F MFE on it. Yeah. But what about Microsoft Office uh, documents? This is you know this is uh, we we are starting with uh, uh, Mail for Exchange for example as the uh, starting point mm -hmm. and uh, see the market uh, um, uh, traction around this. So but we are very excited with this. I think it's a, it's a it's an important milestone because sets the place. Uh, sets the pace actually very clear where we want to go and uh, having you know corporate applications included over there and it's, it's not just about the May for exchange but everything that you can do um, around is using May for exchange as the, the, the leading platform so for example you can you can have um, all the typical security requirements that we would have in a smartphone for a business environment you can have it now with uh, the 302 for example let's say that I get my phone lost and then I can call my IT department and they can sweep it, everything immediately, wherever my phone is. They can delete everything, they can block. So you, you, you are very confident and you know, from, from the companies, I think the corporation is always, it's, it's, it's very interesting. So, and um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great option. Talk to you uh, something different from the devices. Nokia went very, what I tell others is Nokia was a pioneer many things. Talk about the Nokia web server. Mm -hmm. uh, five years back, it was launched, a beta version. It was working very fine, mm -hmm. and Nokia then cut it off. Same concept was brought in iCloud by Apple. Same concept has been used by Google. Mm -hmm. But why Nokia when they bring out new concepts, the Google uh, Glasses thing? Nokia was the first one to launch to show the concept of N97. About three years back, there was a whole video for it. Mm -hmm. Why Nokia when they bring something really unique? They have really good ideas. Why didn't you just go ahead with it? Why didn't you just give the world a concept? This could happen. Then Nokia slouches back, others take over. I think now when you look at the, uh, we have a new strategy in place. So as of uh, you know, last year, we announced very clearly where we want to go. And then you can see that we have three pillars. One, the first one is about the mobile device. Second one is about the smartphones. And then the third one is about future disruption. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those things that you mentioned you know, they would be included in this future disruption because this will sustain the long-term success of our company. So there is a lot of work behind that particular area going on today. So Nokia is giving up the strategy of launching the new stuff and then taking it back for others to take over. Now, if Nokia launches something, we can see something better coming out, out of that. What we want to do is we want to be consistent. We want to deliver a great consumer experience. So um, either working directly as Nokia and creating this or enabling partners to uh, create uh, new applications, for example, that will, you know, be built up on the uh, 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 success of our platform. I think that's uh, that's a very important way to go. And that's why we are talking about the new ecosystem, where it's not just about the hardware, it's not just about the software, but everything that is included around that. Applications, you know, the content, um, uh, the maps, for example, everything that is around, are, around uh, that particular area. Where does Pakistan stand in Nokia's? rankings or standings where are we I I don't have this kind of uh, ranking in terms of uh, you know uh, what no getting is of Pakistan then? I think it's a very important market we're strongly committed to Pakistan I think uh, having this uh, event today it's a very you know concrete way to to show our commitment um, but it's just not this is one piece of the puzzle let's say we have a lot of investment in the country if you look at the uh, the care centers, for example, 
we have, we have 18 care centers here in Pakistan. We have more than 800 uh, collecting points throughout the country where people can, you know, take their device over there, get the device repaired, and then send it back to them, which is massive. We're talking about more than 800 points in there. Um, and a lot of people uh, are running this. So they, they are really making good business out of this. So it's a very positive way to really boost the economy in that sense as well, having the opportunity to more and more people to be included in this kind of ecosystem. Another way that I say is the investment around education. So we have very good relationship with most of the universities, mm -hmm. uh, universities here to really get closer to students and you know show the potential to them. And uh, actually we are having already guys coming out of the university starting to develop the first applications here in Pakistan. Uh, as, as we said today, more than 200 um, uh, uh, developers here from Pakistan are already publishing on, on, on our store, on Nokia store, you know, conquering the world. So this is uh, some of the concrete examples where I see uh, signs of commitment, signs of, of uh, success uh, of uh, Pakistan on a global level. What Nokia plans are for the future in Pakistan? What they are planning to do now? Uh, you know, Pakistan has uh, still a lot of um, uh, opportunities in terms of either penetration. You, when, when look, we're talking about this is the official number from from the government here, around seventy percent penetration level. Mm -hmm. So either for people that you know don't have any device, they will have the very first device. So people that will be the first time buyers. So you have an opportunity there. And people that had, for example, the first uh, device, but now want to jump to a second one. Let's say they had the very first typical 2G device, and then when 3G, for example, comes up here in, in Pakistan, it could be a, a good way for it to go. Um, but also, I, I think delivering this kind of uh, uh, experience that we are bringing around this price point to the consumers here, I think they are key. Having a, a device that are 35 euros, um, you know, having a browser, uh, internet, uh, uh, download applications, uh, Facebook, Twitter, everything under just one single platform on the go. I think that's something very important. I have a comment about the devices that with Nokia, the devices have Urdu built in. Mm -hmm. Even anyone who is not familiar with English can shoot yeah. them to Urdu. But why Nokia uses the Urdu, which is in literally in a sense that you have transferred from Google Translator? How do you get someone better to write better Urdu for the phone? Yes. I'm not familiar with this, but uh, what I can say is that if there is something that is not working, there's always a, an opportunity for another partner to create something else. So we just got an example from a guy in Kenya that um, he created an application exactly to do this, uh, to translate some of the local dialects in a more massive way and very, very going to the tail using the expressions that are very local to that one. And uh, he has more than 300,000 downloads in the countryside of Africa. And this guy is making actually money just because of this. He went to a Nokia seminar, got engaged about, about the platform, started to create um, the first applications in S40, in Series 40 uh, uh, operating system with Nokia. And then all of a sudden, uh, more than 300,000. So I, I invite uh, all your viewers to, you know, if there is any, any area in like this to be created, why not to create an application here in Pakistan that could match this and, and this person can start to actually make money out of that. Okay. People have been asking what Nokia is doing for Pakistan. What would Pakistan can do for Nokia? I think uh, more and more you see people um, that are young, uh, particularly concentrated in urban areas like Karachi, for example, really, really keen to embrace technology. So you see more and more of those guys having Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, all the kinds of uh, instant messaging on the go and it's part of the, na uh, you know, the nature way of communicating that they are. Uh, probably you and me, we had a different kind, we had to pass through the, all the different stages of, you know, going to the fixed line and then the broadband and, you know, all the steps to, to get there. They, those guys, those guys, they don't, they will not have this. They will just leapfrog. They will, you know, some actually a lot of people here in Pakistan will have the first contact with internet over a mobile phone yeah. rather than the typical PC and so forth. So mm -hmm. this is massive because this changes out actually the the behavior, the way that you interact, the way that we share things. So in that sense, I, I you know I can see as I see in Pakistan and other countries more and more of this appetite for for this kind of uh, um, 
enablers that will you know make them to really realize their full potential to interact with more people to share so that's a, a, a good opportunity that I see over there thank you Mr. Salas thank, thank you, for you. Your time. thank you it's a pleasure talking to you likewise let's see if we can catch up over the next uh, global event whenever you are Hopefully. you are you are there and Maybe. I hope the next event also comes to Pakistan